So I heard a, a mystic um, put it thus that when we get, when we come before the Father, He will look for a unique likeness of Christ in us. And so He will examine us and He was like, oh, I see, I see my son. And it's going to be in a unique way. And so how does the sun reflect in us? How, I mean, think about it. We take the body and blood of Christ, us, every day. Um, the old saying, you become what you eat. How are we becoming Christ um, here in the world? Um, I don't know, like, joking? Like, all the times that Jesus sat down and ate? I mean, like, he is so incarnational. He would just, like, sit down and eat. And people would make fun of him for it, or people would ridicule him for it. Like, you know, why are you sitting down with prostitutes and, and taxpayers? And he was just like, because people who are sick need the physician. Um, the Sea of Galilee, Jesus resurrected, talking to the disciples, saying, throw your nets on the other side. And they do, and they recognize the Lord. They come ashore, and he's like, you know, hey, I got some fish cooking on the fire. <laughs> Jesus uh, resuscitating the girl, the, the daughter of, of uh, Jairus, and uh, it says Talitha Kum, and she wakes up and everybody's freaking out. And what does he say? She she needs something to eat. Like he's like thinking of <laughs> what our needs are, and if he does that for our physical needs, how much more so for our spiritual needs? What we really, really need. Now, do I reflect that? I don't know. I can definitely sit down and have a meal with people. <laughs> I was telling Father a little bit about my experience with Willie today. Young man Where's shooting up heroin on the sidewalk out front of the friary. I did feel helpless in the moment, you know. Felt like I didn't really know what to do and I, I have never seen it before. Never seen anyone shooting up drugs right out there in public, especially right within a foot of me. Um, and I was kind of discouraged a little bit afterwards because I was like, I didn't, I feel like I didn't do anything. I questioned myself. I should have, should I, let's see, I don't know if I should have asked him to give him to me. I shouldn't, you know, I was just questioning, wondering what I should have done. And um, I asked him his name and I asked, said, I asked him to say a prayer with him. And I just was really asking the Lord to move his heart, convict his heart. Um, yeah. So it's a, it's sobering and, um, I am powerless in that moment, um, but the Lord isn't. And that gives me a little bit of hope knowing that at some point uh, the Lord can, can use that moment to, to give Willie hope. My name? What's my name? No, where are you from? Oh, I'm from New York, New York. Okay, so try to say your name, where you're from. Hi, my name is Erica Nelson. I formerly worked for the Archdiocese, and now I work with my family as an executive assistant and help run her my family's Catholic books and gift store. I came from a very violent home. Um, my father left when I was young. It was a broken home, and my mom had a boyfriend, and then that just tore me apart. So I'd never had really good examples of what motherhood was and fatherhood was, and that led to like a reckless um, life <laughs> at a very young age. Um, whether it was drugs, like being promiscuous, um, unhealthy friendships, um, it just all started to get dark real quick. Um, I went off to college. Everybody down south, my first college I went to, down south, they go to church on Sunday, but they turn up on Monday. So, <laughs> no, no judgments, all right? <laughs> but um, it, it was really difficult to live that life, and I knew that there had to be something more. Um, so I joined the gospel choir. First, I was just me just showing up, being funny and crazy and like a lunatic, and then all of a sudden I'm singing these songs, and all of a sudden I'm an alto, and all of a sudden I'm part of this concert and this recital and this and that and then um it just hit me one day where I was just like I need to change there's something that is pulling me deeper um 
and I want to know what that is. So I came back home after my second semester and I went on a retreat and in that retreat, it was really charismatic and you know, hands up, hands flailing, everybody worshiping the Lord and all that good stuff, it was my first retreat. And <laughs> I was like, okay, whatever that is, I wanna know what it is. And I saw Jesus in a procession in the Eucharist, he was in the Eucharist, present in the Eucharist. And I looked at him and I was like, this is real. This is true and this is what I want. And this is who I want to follow. Um, for reasons beyond my knowledge, <laughs> and probably still beyond my knowledge. I mean, I'll probably never know what, it, what exactly I felt because I don't, I can't put that into words, but I, I just came to know someone um, who presented himself to me and he approached me. Um, and he approached me as a friend. Like, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> and it just struck me and I needed to, to let that develop. Um, I went back, the summer was, was a little bit easier after that encounter and I, um, I was joining ministry and all this other stuff and it was just me going 100 miles an hour without really stopping to get to know this person that wanted to be my friend. And I, <laughs> I went back to college after that summer and everything was just falling apart. I started questioning everything. No one around me was Catholic, so no one can really form me, <laughs> like inform me what was going on. Um, and I just went into this deep and horrible depression looking for places where I can place my heart in. And just like back before, I come, like that initial encounter because you know, you're just searching. And, I, and um, whether it was drugs and whether it was boys, whether it was um, drinking, um, that's where I was running to. And um, I knew I, need to, I needed to leave that group of friends in that school. So I left. <laughs> a lot of things in my life are very quick. <laughs> very, um, and I know when I'm in danger, I just run towards where it's safest. So I came home. And um, I couldn't go back to my old friends. Um, because none of them were living the life that I desired and I didn't know how to be a friend because I wasn't taught how to be a friend either. So it was just toxic either way. <laughs> so there was a few years during the beginning of my conversion where I felt absolutely alone in, in darkness and trying to live out my faith. So I'd, I'd be in ministries, I'd be here and there, but no one was really my, I never let myself be befriended. Um, then I met the CFRs and I met Corazon Puro. And I mean, my prayer was, Jesus, give me friends that desire holiness more than I do. That was my prayer. And whoa, did he like hit me with like hundreds of people throughout the world. <laughs> like, um, and then it just, it was just insane for me. And I just became to know who I was through these people from the affirmations of like, of how good God is using, like the gifts that I have or um, seeing the Father's love through them, healing through that, having spiritual mothers, spiritual fathers. And that helped me in my mending of my relationship with my own family. Um, it's not perfect, it's not gonna be perfect, but um, these friendships were like, um, beyond what I could ever have imagined. Um, a lot of the times when I, when I talk about Casa Guadalupe, I lived in a house for women who are, um, who are discerning and, and healing. And um, that was like the crash course to love right there. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell y'all. <laughs> this joy is from the Lord. <laughs> um, but it was stretching me. Um, instead of being reckless in things that um, led me to despair, into solitude, into anger. I was like, it was like this other reckless abandonment in love and, and a trans, an absolute transformation of my whole person and into a joy and like purifying that joy, you know? Like, like I entered the gospel choir and it was just like, oh, she's funny and all this stuff and I was just trying to get attention. Now it's like this joy where I just want to encounter people and love them 
and pour out Christ to them because I know what it feels like to not be acknowledged. I wanna say like, you exist and it is so, so good. So good. And I don't want you, I don't wanna walk away from you without you knowing how amazing you are, you know? And um, in doing that, it affirms me and like Father's love for me and like saying, it's good that I exist too. So it's a mutual thing. Sometimes I say I'm selfish, but I do <laughs> because I'm just like, I just want to see people because I just want to love them and, and it makes me feel good. But it's like, it's beyond feeling. It's a truth. It is good that you exist. My name is Holly Wright and I am originally from California and I live now in Clifton, New Jersey in a house of prayer, discernment and healing for women called Casa Guadalupe. Casa Guadalupe is a place for women can come typically for a year to two years commitment to kind of leave everything behind and focus for that time of their lives on what God is calling them to do. Or sort of a hybrid, I suppose, of a religious community and life in the world. The girls do have part-time jobs, so we work, but we do follow the prayer schedule of the Franciscan Friars as well. We're so blessed to have a chapel in our house, so uh, we have community prayer in the morning together, holy hour, daily mass, and um, pray five of the offices together. And then in our free time, it's uh, serving with the friars and the poor in Corazón Puro and spending time together in intentional community. A lot of times it is hard to hear the voice of God in the midst of working and uh, the young adult fast-paced life, especially or in the New York area. And so sometimes taking time away just to be and to listen and to listen together in community is something that's needed. It's also a place for human formation. Um, some of the girls maybe didn't come from a family where they ate meals together and that might be something completely new for someone um, or just learning how to live the Catholic faith like together and not on your own. Some people, they're the only person maybe in their family or of their friends is trying to, to live a, a virtuous life intentionally. And so to be able to do that and be in a, in a safe place and be protected uh, is helpful for them to take that next step. We usually have um, two to three to four roommates in each room and it forces communication skills. <laughs> and. We learned a lot of virtues that I thought I was a very patient person until I lived in community with seven other girls and then two bathrooms and I realized I'm not nearly as patient as I hoped I was. It helps us to grow. I've always thought this. When I was working for the diocese, there was something in me that said like, okay, we can go out to all these places, but they, young adults, need to see people fighting for them people representing them, people who look like them, people who talk like them. I speak street too, so <laughs> that comes out occasionally. But, <laughs> but they need to see this. It's not, I mean, I, I think about um, like a mom defending her child's type of thing. And um, that's what we need to do in the front lines and prayer in these missions, um, being accompanying people and literally walking with them and just hearing them out. Like, you won't even have to say anything sometimes and you're just listening to them. And that's all that they need. Um, that's all that they're yearning for is to be heard. Um, there are people that are walking with you even if you don't even know it. There's people praying for you even if you don't even know it. People are fighting for you and people are offering so many sacrifices for your life. Brothers, we all have a place in, in the Lord. We all have a place, but so many times people have a hard time finding that place or it's a journey, right? It's a journey. Our founder, St. Francis, he tried to belong with the party crowd or tried to belong with the soldiers and all that was part of his journey. And so many people are going through this journey it's, and it's heartbreaking at times. Yeah. Um, what do we, what do we, how do we speak to this? You know, we, we encounter people every day and uh, people come to our door. We meet people on the street. I told the st Willie, story of Willie recently and uh, yeah, it, 
Willie wanted a place. He desired a place, and he said he didn't have one. You know, and um, it's it, it's a reality where uh, we all want that place, um, and uh, it's we we experience this loneliness, and we experience the troubles of life. Maybe a broken family, maybe the challenges of. Of, of everyday life and then we seek that place to be welcomed home to know that there's a security and stability and we often don't find it and so that bears fruit um, in a lot of different ways addiction being one mm. there's an epidemic of loneliness the ec epidemic of isolation right like usually addiction is not the problem it's, the, it's, just, it's a, just a symptom it's the, like you said it, uh, with Father Angels like it's just bearing fruit in a real particular way but whether it's Willie or whether it's the symptom of, um, you know, getting caught up in the world, success, um, you know, like, I, I guarantee there's so many people who have the best job and make a lot of money. And they lay in bed at night and what? Totally isolated, totally alone, maybe surrounded by a lot of people. And they're just, they're, they, they're confronted with this. And so what what's the answer besides kind of you know again we're partial to this but um we're franciscans but but it's a presence mm -hmm. right there's um that the jesus became man to tell us that there's a way home jesus became man to say listen i am i i am your home like it's in me it's in my heart and then what that looks like as we uh, g again go out and preach the gospel and try to be bring his presence right that's what people long for. The belonging. The, it's, I, I find that a lot of young people, like, like we hear, you know, like they go to the parties, they go to the raves, they experiment with the drugs, they, they want to be associated with a particular group. And if you're a parent watching your child go through this, it is like, you just want to go crazy. You want to pull your hair out. Mm. Well. <laughs> somebody's hair out um, because it's like you feel powerless to see them go through this um, I think of Saint Monica of how she prayed for Saint Augustine with tears right with, I mean, oh. it's just like longing and and pining and and that sorrow we experience at our own sins and then the struggles of others like that's a really difficult place to be but like it's the place where Jesus comes and, and, and I think that needs to be said they needs to be heard more because there's a lot of people who, if they aren't in in addiction, they know someone who is. Yeah. They they have an uncle, they have a son, they have a daughter, um, and to to know that the Lord is preparing a place for them to belong. I mean, like what 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 we do our part to play in this is we we kind of create those spaces for those people to come in and say, oh, this is I feel welcomed here, and um, and. Uh, to trust that is hard, yeah. but to know that that's there, amen. But what are what are the what are the different ways that God that God creates the space for us? I think of confession. Mm. Mm. Like think of the gift of the confessional. That becomes a home for people. Jesus comes, right? I mean, the gift of the Eucharist, right? His presence, like finding a home in Jesus as you receive Him, finding a home in adoration, right? That becomes people's refuge. Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, so you got the sacraments, the church, church as mother provides this space for us in so many ways. But like my, I think of my spiritual director, he's a home for me. The brothers are a home for me. Our, the, the, the gift of authentic friendship is a home for me. And for all of us, right, to, to experience belonging. You know, I was very, very close to missing Willie, meaning I almost just walked right by him. And I was on my way somewhere. And uh, I didn't register right away, but I, I was convicted later on because I'm often in a hurry. Mm. And, uh, you know, we, we, have a, we, we do a lot in the name of busyness. And I just wonder if a part of the solution is too, is just to slow down. And then we start to recognize people in our own lives, in our own families, in our own workplaces, in our own schools, at the gym, whatever we do on the street, in the neighborhood, we, we start to recognize people that are in front of us. That, and we start to be a face for others. We start to be a presence for others. Um, but thank God you slowed down mm -hmm. and you did it. And there was a grace there, right? Yeah. As Willie's story, you 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 kind of had this panic moment because you're like, "Whoa, what, this is really happening," mm -hmm. <laughs> and and you stopped and you and you did see him, mm -hmm. right? Even even though it was messy, it wasn't perfect, yeah. right? You know, you wish, you know, however that kind of works out for Willie. But you were you, you were you looked at him, 
and you gave them a place in the world. I think it's just an encouragement for all of us. Uh, we live on our phone. I mean, we don't. But a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of people live on their phones. They live distracted. They live in our hurry, us included, in a lot of different ways. Um, if we want to pierce the darkness of this epidemic of loneliness, of this need to, to belong to one another, we need to be noticed by each other. And we need to, to, to be able to, to look at the person in front of us as, as we pass them or, or as we sit with them at the dinner table and, and be able to truly see them. We talked about in the last episodes as well to truly see the people we live with and, and to, to start to encounter them and, and provide them an experience that we can have together to know that we're not alone. This is what the other things that bring people away simulate. So some people uh, they they get drawn into certain cultures or certain um, things like raves, parties, drugs because it has like a pseudo community. But it's like a it's like a false mm. family. Mm. But this is what they're longing for, and so they will settle people and even ourselves. We settle for substitutes. Amen. Um, people that lost in, in video games. Not in and of itself, Not about a game. video game necessarily isn't wrong. Uh, maybe some of them are, <laughs> but um, but you get drawn into this this community, and then you stay there. Yeah. And in that staying there, Father, like fathers, what what I don't think we need to be afraid of is the dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction of what? That moment where they're 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 confronted with themselves and they they have all these substitutes and there's going to come a time. Francis of Assisi was dissatisfied, mm. right? Like something something was missing, right? And and this is where we want people to like get to is that they're they're not afraid. Um, or they have people with them to be like, okay, let's go to the moment and realize that like there is something missing. I'm totally dissatisfied. Yeah, I, I heard a, a young woman uh, talk about she was within her family uh, going going somewhere and then her little sister put the, the earphones on and she said, hey, we're here. We haven't gotten there. Why are you putting the, the, the earphones on? And she said, oh, no one was saying anything. So I just like, and she said, no, I'm here. <laughs> I'm yeah. here, and that, that's what we do. Whatever the the headphones are, yeah. we go into our world. Um, but there's someone right there, right next to you, to be present to the person there. You were present to a man literally on the street who felt he had no place. Mm -hmm. um, this is a way for us to bring Christ's presence to the world. No, no more barriers, right? No more barriers, no more headphones, no more screens, like in context, but just like, let's just, let's just like, just be, let's say, let's preach this, this culture of encounter and this culture of presence by just inviting people to set themselves free from all the barriers. Mm -hmm. Because then that's when you experience this authentic joy, authentic freedom, right? There's nothing to hold people down, distract people. They'll probably still get distracted, but the idea is just to let it all go. Father Innocent, I know there's people uh, who are in this conversation who know someone who wants to let go but can't. Mm. You say a prayer for them? Amen. You pray it up for them? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We adore you. We thank you for being present to us. We thank you for breaking through our, our barriers. We thank you for inviting us to a deeper relationship with you. And most of all, a deeper relationship with the people that we live with and the people that we love. Lord Jesus, send the fire of your Holy Spirit to break through those barriers. Send the fire of your Holy Spirit to break through fear, to break through distraction, to break through sadness and loneliness. And Lord, just we just need your presence. And with confidence, we ask for it now. Amen. 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 God bless all of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. I think it's a continual conversion to know that you're good and that you exist because there's different points in your life that you go through different seasons in your life and it's an always um, it's always a struggle for me personally and to acknowledge that I'm good that I'm not who I was and I'm not my sins so um, it helps me to go to the sacrament of confession and it helps me to be in adoration, that's where I receive my identity, I guess you can say. Um, that's where I receive um, and look beyond um, my faults and I see hope 
and I see my dreams and I see his desire for my life to be joy. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Brothers, I'm offering this mass up for a young man I met yesterday named Willie. Um, he is addicted to heroin. And I got out of the car and he was shooting up right, right there on the sidewalk. I've never seen that before. And uh, I ended up being so startled, I walked past him. And uh, it's funny because I, I started to pray for him. And then he followed me, and so I'm glad I got to talk to him. We were right outside of St. Crispin's, and uh, he stopped. And I said, I said, what's your name? And he, and he didn't want to tell me at first. And uh, he said it's, his name was Willie, and I said, what are you doing, Willie? And he said, Father, there's no place for me. There's no place for me. And I haven't felt as helpless as I did yesterday meeting Willie in a long time. What was I going to do, you know, besides ask him if I could pray with him and give him a blessing and pray that uh, the grace of the Lord would be powerful enough uh, to break into Willie's life. I left that and I saw Willie again. And what was he doing? Shooting up again. The only thing that can work, brothers, is for Jesus to say, come up here. Jesus says, I have a place for you. I have a way forward for you. And brothers, I pray that as a community and as a, as a group of brothers who are attentive to the poor, that we'll always be mindful of how the poor have a place with us. They have a home with us. And I'm encouraged thinking about our community because we, we work hard at doing that. But um, I'm more convicted that uh, there's more willies out there and there's more men and women who feel like they don't have a place. Uh, Willie was despairing, like legit despair. Um, and he thought heroin was his way out. And I just pray and, and ask the Lord as we come to him today in the Eucharist that he could give us the grace as brothers uh, to, be, to be a light, to be brothers and sisters to those who don't have a place. And so we pray at this Mass, it's beautiful for those in confinement, for those who are addicted. Uh, and we pray for special graces for anybody we might know who has an addiction, um, who maybe is on the outside looking, looking for a place. And we pray for the only thing that will work, which is the power and presence of Jesus to come into their lives. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.